without a doubt, Abuja is one of the beautiful and well planned cities in Africa. It has lots of green vegetation that you will love, excellent road infrastructure, porched houses, underground drainages, and all the other good stuff that you can think about. Unfortunately, there's also the ugly side of Abuja, which is the increasing rise of urban slum settlement and villages within the city center. From Jabi to Gariki, from Metama to Asokoro, where the rich live, to every beautiful district in Abuja city center, you'll be shocked to see an enclave of slum settlement in between the spaces or just beside it. Let me show you. You'll find that there are over 10 locations of urban settlements like this scattered all over the city center. Whoa. See how narrow this place really is? <laughs> this is crazy. So right now we are in Guzape district. So Guzape district is one of the developing hybrid districts in Abuja, Nigeria. All this area is a Guzape area actually and it looks really nice. And then at my back, which I've just turned my camera now, this is the Badua village. So you can see how that place looks like. So even from this end to that end, you can see. So you can see the roofs. You can look at the roofs and all of that. So let's just take a walk so you guys can see what I'm saying. So you can see how narrow part this place is, huh? Good evening. See how narrow part. Squeeze. Tight. Okay, so right now we are in Jabi District. Jabi District is one of the beautiful, well-known districts within the Abuja city centre. But also in this Jabi District, you find there is a Jabi village inside right in the midst of this beautiful district actually and if i flip my camera at my back that is where you have the jabi village over there so this is the major main road most people actually pass but at my back you have the jabi village so i'm just going to cross the main road and we're going to go there so i can show you guys this jabi village i'm talking about so right now we are taking a walk inside so i can show you guys how this place really looks like Oh, no, bro. So, you can see one good house in the midst of the other houses as well. Okay. I'm trying to find my way out. So, so one regular thing, one regular sight you keep seeing when you come to slums like this is the open gutters with you know water dirty waters flowing everywhere so this is one regular site unfortunately you get to see around this kind of uh, settlement so Abuja is supposed to be a purpose-built planned city without slums like this. But what really happened to the Abuja master plan and why there's so many rising slums like this? And also what is the government solutions to this problem? Let's find out. Lagos was originally the capital of Nigeria but in 1978 a search for a new capital city began and Abuja was selected after due considerations. It was agreed that the original inhabitants of the land, the Bagis, would be compensated and settled before commencing construction of the city. 
However, that resettlement was partially done with the plans that more people will be resettled as development gets to their location. Unfortunately, that was not the case as many of the original habitants were not relocated and yet the city was built. In 1991, Abuja officially became the capital of Nigeria. Because the government failed to relocate most of these indigenous, which is why they are still here, and over time they also sold their lands to the visitors who also put up structures. And this is how this whole place got populated and became a slum. However, there are promises that the original dwellers, the indigents, will be relocated and resettled, even though that has not happened as of the time of this video. Abuja was designed to accommodate a population of 1.6 million people and expandable by its size to 3.2 million people. However, due to rapid migration, Abuja is currently at over 6 million in population. More and more people keep moving to Abuja from all over the country because they believe they can find better opportunities here. Given that most government and international organizations also have their headquarters in Abuja. Other people also move to Abuja because they believe they can get some kind of political connection or at least get hooked with some money misrule politician or Abuja big boys. Unfortunately, many of these people cannot afford to pay the expensive house rent within the city center so they have no option but to live in one of these slums within the city center in order to be close to the city. Almost every corner and district in Abuja, you find housing estates like this one at my back popping out. But the problem is how many people can really afford to pay for houses like this. So for houses like this, even if you are taking like two bedroom or three bedroom block of flats for houses like this, you end up paying nothing less like than 25 million naira, depending on the location. If the location is within the city center, you pay even much higher. If the location is outside the city center, you pay from 25 million naira upward. That is the problem. Many people cannot afford that kind of luxury. So real estate developers are actually not building according to the popular demand, but they're building according to the luxury and what they want to achieve. So the housing deficit problem is not necessarily because of lack of house, but because of the houses being built does, does not tell law to the popular demand that is in Abuja at the moment. So you hardly can find real estate developers building bungalows. It's only duplexes, terraces and houses like this that you find them building and which is quite expensive. So there seems to be some kind of unwritten rule that if you're not rich, Abuja is not meant for you because Abuja is very expensive, especially when it comes to housing. So how is the government actually tackling this exponential rise in urban slum settlement? Anything that is not, yeah, they are not doing anything that have, they have not come to us. They came to the chief of Utako, we are able to sit down with them and understand and agree. And we cry that they should remember that we are not yet to resettle. And they told us actually it's because of the security purpose. And we agree and understand what is happening now in our country. However, after demolition, the demolished area are not developed. So within a few months, you see fine shanties popping up almost everywhere. So certainly this strategy alone cannot work to stop the rise of urban slum settlement in the city. Secondly, in order to decongest the Abuja city center, the government started a land swap program where private developers are given a free land outside the city center to develop it. In turn, the developer will build critical infrastructure such as road and drainages before building their estate. This initiative is very great because it's helping to develop the other side of the federal capital territory. However, this does not solve the problem of slum settlement within the city center, as most people who actually live in this slum do not want to live far from the city center. And beside that, the houses that the developers actually build are also not cheap 
because at the end of the day, they still factor in the cost of developing this critical city infrastructure such as road and drainages into the housing cost. In my opinion, I think the government should properly relocate the indigents if they want the city centre to be free from slums like this. However, they have said that the cost of relocation will cost around 500 billion naira. After relocation and resettlement of the indigents, I believe a massive low-cost housing estate should be built within the city centre ASICs with a proper implementation strategy that will ensure that only the poor and the middle class gets the house. Notwithstanding, Abuja remains one of the most beautiful cities in Africa and you will not even notice the slums if you visit the city, except it is pointed out to you. So on the next video, we'll be visiting at least 10 urban slums and villages within the city center to see what those places looks like as well as to see what life is like living in those places so we'll be interviewing the people that live in those areas for security you have safe is it well tight really yeah there's no hundred percent hundred percent assurance really they are tight because all those prominent people is around, oh, around there yeah. okay yes. because of that this area is protected yeah. yes you've been living here 18 years why is it uh, safe there yes it paid lesser and easy for location to town. Yeah, you say it's very close to town. Yes. Okay. With, um, with my hundred now, I can take me for here to Banis. Bike fifteen hour to Nike Conjunction, fifteen hour mm. to Banis. To Banis. You just walk out. Enter town. If I'm going to area one, I'm going to two hundred. Fifteen hour here. Cap one fifty to area one. Okay. You this. Know, okay. That's why it's more people prefer yes, to stay yeah, here because it's very stay, close. Stay here. Yes. What are your thoughts in today's video? Do you have any solution to solving this? rapid rising urban slums within the city center all right drop your comments below and if you're not part of this community yet please subscribe to the channel share this video if you like it and if you're watching this video after the second video have been uploaded please do check it out because i will put up the link above and thank you so much for watching today's video and i'll see you guys in the next video okay.